And we are back, folks, and getting ready for what could be a very, very entertaining bout. Carlos, Jaime, I mean, I'm looking forward to this stuff. This house is sold out tonight, and that's largely in part due to the professional debut of former UNLV leading scorer for two years in a row. In 2000 and 2001, he led the UNLV running Rebels in scoring. Kaspars Kambala. Carlos, what are your thoughts on this guy? We'll get back to him in a moment as we uh, get to Jake and Terrace briefly. Well, it looks like Jake's going to give us that ring introduction now. Welcome our next fighters and our next bout. First, making his way to the ring. Please welcome Alvaro Morales. Well, uh, getting back. So we see Alvaro Morales, then we'll ask Jaime about Alvaro in a moment. But getting back to Casper, I mean, we got U former UNLV coach uh, Jerry Tarkanian right behind us. I mean, uh, boy, it's a UNLV kind of a night, I suppose. And um, Caspar didn't play for uh, Jerry. He um, played, for, I believe, for uh, either Roly, it was either Rolly Massimino or Bill Bain, I believe it um, Well, I thought of Morales. And as we see Alvaro Morales enter the ring, Alvaro Morales weighed in yesterday at 283 pounds. He's coached by Raul Morales, his father, and Luis Tapia. And now... Well, now you see uh, the UNLV. Yo estuve viendo los entrenamientos de de Casper Cambala y en el en el gimnasio de Richard Steele y pues es impresionante como un heavyweight de su tamaño a pelea con unos pues en realidad los heavyweights no siempre son tan grandes y esperemos que dé un gran debut aquí en Las Vegas. He did it much ahead to get the see the rap. And uh, you mentioned uh, to me yesterday, Castle, that uh, one of his cornermen is Dewey Cooper, uh, established a K1 fighter and MMA guy. Uh, be interesting to know what uh, what out of that regimen that the MMA guy goes through, Dewey Cooper is perhaps uh, bringing to the table. Here. Casper Kambala is so excited or focused or a little of both. He walked right past the ring steps and almost to the wrong side of the ring. But now, as uh, followed by his trainer, Richard Steele of Steel Cage Promotions, we're going to send it up to Jake Gutierrez for the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring in a special four-round heavyweight attraction. The three judges scoring will be C.J. Ross, Robert Hoyle, and Jerry Roth. Once again, our referee in charge is Jay Needy. Introducing first, he fights out of the red corner. He entered the ring wearing the black trunks, and he weighed in at 283 pounds. His professional record stands at one victory, no losses with true draws. He is from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alvaro Morales. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks. And he weighed in at 271 pounds. During his college career, he was a member of the UNLV Running Rebels basketball team. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he makes his professional debut. Originally from Riga, Latvia, now living and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Introducing Kaspar Kambala. Pues ahí vemos que la gente. Uh, tiene muchos seguidores este Kambala y pues uh, veremos que a ver si sabe pelear de la manera que todos esperan verlo pelear porque esta noche será su debut en los profesionales. Jaime, uh, what can you tell us? ¿Qué nos puedes decir de Álvaro Morales? Álvaro Morales pues es un, un peleador que pues aguanta todo y vemos que no está muy, que digamos muy marcado del cuerpo y pues ojalá él le aguante porque lo que sí he visto a uh, esa Caspar lo he visto entrenar ahí en el Richard Steel Gym y Créeme lo que con el que se pone uh, es impresionante. So, uh, a lo mejor vamos a ver una noche muy corta. Well, Castle, he said Castle looks impressive in training. Um. Well, we see here now as Alvaro Morales with some good amateur experience made it through the JOs in 2000. He lost in the semifinals of the National Golden Gloves in 2003, but he does know how to fight. And Casper Kambala coming out pretty impressive for a guy who just started his boxing career. Seeming to have a stiff jab, Alvaro Morales, seeming cool, throws a left jab over the top, and these are two big boys, six foot nine, two hundred and seventy-one pounds is Casper Cambala. Bueno, no cabe duda que Cambala es el favorito del público y sería 
sería un tremendo susto para todos si de repente lo viéramos en, el, en la lona, ¿no, Carlos? Ah, pero Jaime, it could happen. I mean, he's facing a guy that has professional experience. Um, uh, usually when you get a guy, me and Castle spoke about this yesterday, when you get a guy like Kambala that has a background in a different sport, they can look awkward in there when you first step into the ring. Um, their movements don't quite look as natural, but Kambala, um, outside of holding his hands a little bit lower perhaps than you would like here early on, looks, you know, looks the part of a fighter, uh, Castle. Yeah, he, he reminds me of a Nikolay Valuev, both in size and in appearance. He's uh, sí. almost seven feet Bigate. tall at six feet nine, and uh, you know, with Valuev at seven feet tall, he would really uh, make for a, the, probably the largest of all combined weights and height in the heavyweight you know, history. Uh, Alvaro, Alvaro uh, so far looking somewhat calm and, and cool. He seems to be taking his time. He comes in with a left right, both fall short, and yeah, Casper's arms are a little low, but seems to be fairly comfortable in there as uh, round one reaches the halfway point. Now, we, um, both fighters would be well invested to attack the body here. Um, in the case of Alvaro Morales, for obvious reasons, it's a big target on Kambala. Um, in the case of Kambala, for obvious reasons, it's a big target on Morales. Boy, he, uh, he looks like uh, he may not be able to take body shots too early. And there's a nice right hand by Morales, lands on the chin of... Kaspar and Kaspar does a good job shaking it off. But speaking to Alvaro earlier before this fight, he indicated that uh, <coughs> he indicated that he was going to come in with head movement as he's doing now, and he's doing a real good job moving laterally. Or at least his head is moving well, and it's making it a little difficult for Kaspar. Kaspar is going to want to use that jab and try and slow down the head movement. Pero Kaspar pues está haciendo una pelea inteligente con el jab y después uh, anotando con la derecha para no darle mucha entrada a Álvaro que le vaya a lastimar y pues vemos que es una pelea inteligente ah, no se está aborazando, está peleando de acuerdo a como le están poniendo la, la pelea en uh, Mora Morales I mean it's interesting that a guy that's 281 pounds can make himself a small target but that's what we're seeing to a certain effect with Morales and um, you know uh, we talk Kessel about what a tall guy like Campala can do to make himself less of a target one thing he can do is to keep the right distance, and that's what he did in that round. He maintained the proper distance and uh, probably gave him the edge in round one. Yeah, and you know, Mor uh, Morales actually said he was glad that he came in a few pounds heavier than Kambala. He said he was looking forward to that weight advantage, and you know, if he could get inside and land that leather, we see from a replay here now, uh, Morales comes over with a nice strong overhand right, um, and it's probably because, as you indicated earlier, Carlos, Caspars isn't really keeping his own hands up, and it's resulting in Morales being able to tag him. You see a little red, redness around the mouth of Kambala as he... Y, y quizá puso golpes más importantes uh, que, que Caspar, este, Morales, a lo mejor puso mejores golpes en este asalto. Vemos que, que Caspar no está, uh, no está todavía... Uh, seleccionando exactamente lo que el estilo que quiere pelearle para entrar bien en contra Alba, en contra Morales. Una question Castle and uh, Jaime, um, could Morales be well served since he's already backing up anyways to take the half to back and maybe sort of try to suck a Kambala and reaching in with a punch? Uh, uh, you know, you get a tall guy like that maybe reaching down with something and leaves him wide open for a counter perhaps? Well, I'm it's, it's certainly not a bad idea. I'd like to see perhaps some more body shots like that. I think if Morales could lay some leather into the, the midsection of Caspar, uh, he may get Caspar to really concentrate on the midsection and then come upstairs with a nice right hand like that. You saw Caspar trying to shake it off some more redness around the nose. Right now. As now Morales comes in with a wild overhand right, a haymaker of sorts. Kabbalah, good job in getting to the side of that. Chaparrito pero picoso y el panzón, pero de todos modos aguanta y parece que tiene bien preparado Morales para esta pelea y vemos que pues está en realidad uh, sacando los mejores golpes, al menos ante mis ojos, ¿qué creen ustedes? Ah, Pampara tiene que tener cuidado Jaime, porque si él se supone que es el show aquí, nadie se lo contó a Morales. Exactamente, no hay nada escrito en el boxeo. And he seems to be pulling that punch on his right. And Alvaro seems to be getting a little confidence here as round two. He's not moving back, he's actually moving forward, which is contrary to what we saw at the beginning of the bout. Having had experience here, Castle, he feels relaxed in there. Um, Kampala, this is his debut, he's a little tight. He's pushing those punches out right now instead of snapping them out. Um, Castle, uh, 
uh, advice to a friend of mine that wants to box in the Golden Gloves. Why it's so important to uh, stay relaxed in the ring right there because we think of Paula, um, and the worst part about it is it tires you out. By the end of the third round, you're helping your puppet because you're, you're arm weary. And you already see the huffing and puffing from Casper Samala here. He definitely seems to be sucking wind. He's got some redness around his mouthpiece. Seems to be causing him a little discomfort as it's sort of shifted from inside his mouth to outside his mouth. And I spoke to Alvaro before the fight. He said, hey, what's your game plan? He said, I don't have a game plan. He says, I never have a game plan. He likes to go in there and feel it out. That's what he did in round one. And now in round two, he seems to be formulating his game plan on the fly. Y los golpes de Cambala en realidad no están tanto en donde quiere ponerlos. Es más, no tiene ni poder para, para pegar. Ya, ya perdió el ritmo que tenía, al menos con el jab al principio de la pelea. Ahora ya ni eso. Creo que ya está más en la protección que pegar. Uh, no, no tiene un golpe ordenado que digamos para poder ganar esta pelea o este round en realidad. Well, Castle, you wonder what the difference is. You see a guy like this, he's sparring in the gym, he's sparring five, six, seven rounds, he's, he's looking good, he's sparring better opposition. What happens when the lights are on? Well, well that's just it, the lights are on. Well, and you're going to go out there and the, the blood coming profusely out the nose of Caspar as you hear it from the crowd. Caspar's Kamala going back to his corner. It looks like he's going to stand as he gets some advice from his coach and head trainer, Richard Steele. His second, by the way, as mentioned earlier, Dewey Cooper, a uh, former champion in the mixed martial arts discipline. He's got some well-rounded trainers here. Okay. His biggest enemy is himself right now. Right now, what's happening with Kashmar's Kambala is that he's out there thinking. He can see the light. He can hear the crowd. He knows the spotlight is on him. And now, what he did in the gym for weeks and weeks, easy and naturally, isn't quite as easy, isn't quite as natural. His biggest enemy right now is inside his own head. And what Catherine has to do is get back to having fun. To just be, he needs to think like he's back in the gym, sparring with his buddy, having fun. Y la intimidación, y y la intimidación nos está costando porque vemos que ni siquiera le ponen un asiento para que descanse un poco, ¿verdad? De una manera, Jaime, um, Morales, ¿ves? Y you see Casper's coming out, throwing some punches, he's still taking some heavy wind as he tries to recuperate here. Round three underway, and Caspar's is just swinging for the fences right now. And now Alvaro, with a nice lead left hook, catches Caspar's on the chin. Cualquiera diría que ese grandote le va a pegar a ese chiquito y fíjate que estamos viendo todo lo contrario, que Álvaro trae un buen plan tirando y anotando de una manera más contundente porque vemos que el golpe desordenado de Caspar pues no, no está siendo muy efectivo que digamos. Y Caspar came out this round trying to assert himself by jabbing again and throwing strong punches, but man, when Álvaro tagged him with that counter left that you alluded to, uh, Castle, he uh, once again slowed down to the trickle. Yeah, I think Alvaro does a real good job landing that right, but he's going to have to come off the jab. I think when he throws a left to the body like that, he's setting up Caspar's for a right to the head. And he did it earlier, and he bloodied the nose of Caspar's. And now you hear it from the crowd. They want to see some action here. And you see why they call boxing a sweet science. Again, it's just amazing to me that a 281-pound guy can make himself so hard to hit. And you see, it's just a lot of it's just his great head movement. His head is never stationary here. Yeah, he really does show some good grace and some good fundamental discipline. Alvaro Morales, 283 pounds, is moving like a super middleweight. Sí, exactamente. Y vemos que, pues, en realidad, ambos ya están cansados, pero todavía vemos que, pues, a Casparta no, tan no se anima a meterse al torbellino porque ya creo que tiene un poco más de precaución en caer aquí. And there it is again, Alvaro Morales. He goes downstairs to the body with a left and then upstairs to the head with a huge overhand right and just Kambala can't stop it. He can't keep his hands up. He's not skilled enough yet in his early career to see that coming and to step aside before it happens. Y Jaime, los dos están cansados, pero es, eh, el caso de Morales, por estar más relajado, eh, es, está menos cansado. Kambala puede estar tan apretado, ya está... Muy, muy apretado, los, pu los puños no los suelta y por eso lo empuja con las brazos nada más. No y tiene ojalá. ninguna potencia. Y pues aquí se puede decir que es la casa de Cambala <risa> y ojalá y no vamos a tener un veredicto que a la gente no le va a agradar demasiado si le dan la pelea a Cambala como dijimos, ¿verdad? Queremos que pues, Morales está haciendo suficiente para ganar pues por mayoritaria, ¿no? Unánime. 
And as you see again, Kamala's hands down low, but he's still punching. I'm impressed with his his heart here at Casper Kambala. This is his first professional fight. He started boxing later on in his career. He's now 29 years old. His first time here on the stage like this. He's been on the basketball stage before, but this is different. He's in the squared circle now, and he's doing a good job of trying to make a good showing for himself here in his pro debut. And you see the competitor in him come out and meet Castle. He doesn't want to lose this fight at all. Y le deberían de poner un asiento porque pues en realidad está cansado y él debería de sentarse un poco para que pues le echen de perdida agua en la cabeza o algo, no. Que se siente y les case las piernas. Yeah, he okay. he's holding up a lot of weight. That's a valid point. He probably should have his feet. But uh, who knows? Some of these guys uh, live by that stand in the corner thing. They, they think you breathe better when you stand in the corner. There may be some truth to the breathing, but uh, you know, you're worrying about your legs out there. And you think about a big guy. He's pushing quite a lot of weight. Carlos, there you see on the replay I want now, Alvaro Morales with the overhand right lands on the jaw of Caspar's Kambala. And Kambala game on his toes he seems to be in fairly good condition as he gets work done in his corner and Carlos how do you have it here after three rounds I actually have a uh, uh, Morales ahead two rounds to one 29 to 28 and I mean this last round um, he uh, rounds two and three he just he been he slowed down the pace to where he wanted it and he landed the, the effective blows um, Kambala's a little busier but he's missing more often as well Okay, well, round four, the fourth and final round. Alvaro Morales out of the red corner. Caspar's Kambala out of the blue corner. Action here in the center of the ring. Referee Jane 80 looking on. Ahora entiendo la sonrisa irónica de Morales ahí en, el, en la conferencia de prensa cuando todos sus, la mirada estaban en Kambala y él traía una sorpresita y estamos viendo que pues una pelea muy competitiva y pues a nuestros ojos, al menos a los míos, él va ganando la pelea. O sea, Jaime, su sorpresita era que sabe boxear. <risa> sabe lo que es hacer en el cuadrilátero. Ah, pero todavía falta tiempo aquí para cualquiera hacer daño. Y los dos son muy grandes, Jaime. And a left right by Alvaro Morales gets the crowd on their feet now here. We're in the fourth and final round. They'd love to see a knockdown one way or the other. And let's see if Alvaro Morales can keep the pressure on Caspers in this fourth round and try and make something of it. This card, this one may go to the, the scorecards. If it does, I think it's going to be close. Caspar's showing a lot of heart out there. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, not only that, but boy, can anything phase him? I mean, he gets hit. He barely feels his punches. I mean, the guy is really launching some good left hooks here. Yeah, Caspar's has shown a pretty good jaw so far. I mean, Alvaro hasn't really landed some heavy leather, oh, but he has landed a, a couple of shots right now. And now a cut over the left eye of Alvaro Morales. Yeah, that, if that was that cut, I don't think that cut was caused by a headbutt. There's been no headbutt that I've seen of in this fight. No, these boxers have been, you know, competing from the outside. There has Boy, not what been a shame it would be for Morales if a cut would stop this fight right now from Kambala. Yeah, Kambala knows he's got an opportunity here. He's going to go right after it. That's right, and let's see what Caspars can do to close the show now as Morales coming back with a nice strong left of his own. Listen to that crowd. Bienvenido, bienvenido a los profesionales, Kambala. <laughs> and there's a left-right combination by Kamala that seems to make Alvaro think twice before coming in again. And there's a nice left jab by Kambala and a right hand to the body. And another right to the body, and now Alvaro goes down to the body. It looks like both guys have decided to make this a body shot contest here in the fourth and final round. Now, he should have committed to that earlier in this fight. He would have had a better fight. Hey, it's a pelea competitiva y agradable para el público. Ahora vemos que el ojo de, de Morales pues está sangrando demasiado. Y pues por eso fue que el referee ahorita llamó al doctor para que mirara esa herida. Pero parece que la va a hacer hasta el cuarto round. And it's funny because in the basketball days, Kambala was known to be pretty good with the hook shot and he's seemed to develop a, an interesting left hook here in the boxing game. He throws it, there it is, he sort of throws it out softly, not with too much authority, but you know, one day that could be a pretty powerful weapon in his arsenal. Something to work on in the gym, get more leverage behind that punch. <laughs> right now though, he's ready to take this round and with it, uh, pull this fight into a draw, at least in my school card. Uh, he seems to be telegraphing his punches a little too, and it's giving a veteran like Alvaro Morales, rather a veteran, an amateur 
make that a, a young professional fighter with a veteran amateur experience. A ver, Carlos, uh, cómo tienes la pelea. See them coming. Well, after four rounds, I had this fight a, a dead even heat uh, draw, 38 to 38, uh, two rounds to two. Um, I gave the first round and the last round to Campala. I gave the two middle rounds to Morales. Ahí vemos la repetición. Pues eh, pienso que el corte que recibió a Morales sobre el ojo cambió mucho lo 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 puso un poco atrás de lo que iba adelante ya <coughs> lo, lo atrasó le, le atrasó sin duda pues le, le hizo reducir reducir su ataque y le dio una ventaja psicológica ese golpe ya ahí, ahí está el golpe ahí, ahí miramos la repetición donde le pegó el golpe de y una se derecha claramente inmediatamente después que se estaba ya viendo la sangre venir y se estaba Morales chequeando um, Cambió la mentalidad de los dos boxeadores ese, ese golpe. Y, y puso a Campala de nuevo en esta pelea. Esta pelea la tenía por perdida, pero se cerró uh, fuerte y posiblemente se llevó un empate a base de eso. A ver, vamos a ver qué dicen los jueces ahora, los jueces oficiales, que es en realidad lo que importa, los números que ellos pongan en la pizarra. Well, folks, here we go. Uh, Jake Gutierrez, gentleman Jake Gutierrez, seems to have the official word for us, and we're going to send it upstairs right now and here how the judges saw this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of heavyweight action, we go to the scorecard. Judge Robert Hoyle scored this bout 40 to 36 for Kambala. Judges Jerry Roth and Judge CJ Roth scored this bout the same 38 to 38. This bout has been declared a majority draw, majority draw. Hey, Carlos, eres un genio. <laughs> Al público no le gustó nada, pero tú dijiste que pues era un dead even y ahí está. It wasn't too popular with the crowd castle, but it was the right verdict. At least I saw so, um, you know. Yeah, I think when uh, Kambala drew blood in the fourth round, the judges sort of got a sense that maybe he was doing some some work Damage. there that didn't seem to maybe be so clear in the first and second rounds. However, I think it was a fair decision and it was a good start to Caspar Kambala's professional boxing debut. And I'm sure we're going to see more of him. He obviously sells the sells the seats and puts people in the house. Hey, and you know, Frank Luca likes that. So um, good job. Congratulations to they say get the draw is like kissing for as impressive well. Impressive first bout here. And so that's to a Alvaro Morales. All right. So we'll see him again real soon. I mean, that was both fighters because uh, you train in the gym for however many weeks and you come out and you know you don't get a clear cut win early. All right, Richard. <laughs> That's how they exit the ring, you know. Um, I mean, that was que del modo en que se sale, nomás pone un pie arriba de la última cuerda de una manera pues facilito, no? De lo grande que está. What did you think of that castle? Casper's uh, Campala with his Andre the Giant ring entrance, stepping literally over the top rope to enter the ring. I haven't seen Andre the Giant since uh, Pluto was a pup. 